Welcome to the sixth in our video of quadcopter building for beginners. Now, so far we have done most of the work on the quadcopter and the power system is kind of sorted out. So in the last video, we spent a little bit of time doing things like actually sorting out the motor connections, wiring up the ESC, the power distribution board and putting everything together. So now we are ready to attach and configure the radio. Now the radio system also works on five volts and what we're going to do is we're going to add this little piece onto the craft this is the radio receiver and on here you can see it's got all of these connections kind of listed out and we're going to have to plug these into the flight controller so the flight controller can hear what we want it to do and we're also going to have to set the radio up as well so I would always recommend setting the model up in the radio before binding the receiver to the radio and then plugging the receiver into the model and checking that you can see everything working okay. Now that is what we're going to do in this video. So by the end of this video we'll have the radio set up and installed on the model and then in the next video we can connect to CleanFly and do the final setup and configuration, make sure that everything all works and then we are ready for our first test hover. So first of all, let's talk about what kind of features you need on the radio and then from there we'll actually then bind the radio to the receiver once it's set up. Then we'll talk about the different connection styles to a board like this. We actually have a much more detailed video that goes through all of that and I will refer you to that other video if you want to know all the nitty gritty. But we're going to talk about making a connection via PPM in this video because it's the one that's the easiest and works the most often on boards. Then we'll connect everything up to clean flight. We'll move the sticks on the radio and make sure that clean flight can see it and that's all working. And once we've got there, we'll be at the end of time for this video. So let me put this quadcopter out of the way for a second and let's talk about the radio first of all. So the way the radio works is pretty basic. It is just sending the control positions from the sticks on the radio up to the receiver and the receiver then outputs those signals on these pins that are then connected to the flight controller and the flight controller then reads those and interprets those as how you want to move everything around. Now this is a cheap and cheerful radio I need to say a very big thank you to banggood.com that's where we got this one from there's a link in the description below if you're interested in taking a look at this specific radio this is a Fly Sky FS-I6 it's a rather basic radio but it's quite cheap and cheerful now we've already had to take the back off the radio and modify it a little bit because as it comes both sticks are like this one where they're sprung to return to the middle position now for the throttle you don't want that to happen so this is going to be my throttle how much power is going to the motors and then typically the way it works is that's rudder and it makes the model rotate in the sky that makes the model go left to right and the elevator makes the model go forwards and backwards. So I've had to do another little video, and you can go and watch that one here, where we actually took the back off the radio and we changed this stick here so that the throttle keeps its position. There are lots of other buttons on here as well, and we'll talk about those in a second, but we have buttons for things like the different switches we have here. We have two position, and we also have three position switches, and they'll be handy for things like flight modes, and we even have little push buttons at the back. So for the kind of money that we're talking about here, I think this is less than about $50 when it comes with a receiver, it's not a bad little radio. It would have been a great radio if it had come without that throttle stick uh, returning automatically to centre. So the radio that you need for this, uh, we're going to use this one in the video, but you could use any radio that you've got, so long as it has a couple of things. You need at least five channels on the radio to fly a multi-rotor. Now those five channels are throttle, rudder, elevator and aileron, and one other channel that you are going to use to change the flight modes on the flight controller. It doesn't hurt to have more channels, you can do other things, but you definitely need to be able to have five channels. You also need to be able to access things like sub trim and you also need to be able to access things like travel. And that is because uh, normally what you'll find is that the middle position each of these sticks should be read by the flight controller as 1500. So what you find is if a stick is all in one direction, that's read to flight controller as 1000. If it's all the other direction, it's read as 2000. So the middle position is 1500. And you typically find that every radio, just because the way it works and the tolerance is how they're built, doesn't read exactly 1500. 
Because the flight controller thinks that 1500 is the middle, if it's not set up on the radio for 1500, then it thinks what you're doing is you've actually moved the stick slightly in one direction and your craft will drift, but we'll look at that in a second. So what I'm going to do is very quickly show you how I've set the model up on here. And then we'll bind the receiver to the radio and then we'll plug it into the model itself. So let's power up this radio. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we can get a better view on each of these menu options. So to power the radio on is pretty straightforward. You just press and hold both of these power buttons. It sings to you and here is the main screen. Now, most of the radios have lots of other greeblies and pieces on here. This one doesn't because it's all done through the touch screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the setups and I'll show you how it works. Now from here, if you kind of swipe one way, uh, you have all of the sensor values from the receiver. We're not going to cover anything like that today. And if you swipe the other way from the main screen, here are all the channel values. So as I move the sticks, there's the throttle, which is channel 3. If I move the rudder, it's channel 4. It goes from one side to the other. And then if I move the elevator, that's channel 2. And then channel 1 is going to be our aileron. So we can see all those working. This is a brilliant screen. It means we can very quickly see which order the radio has all the channels in. And we can also see here that I've also set up channel 5 to be a controlled by that switch there. So let me show you how I've done that. So in here, we're going to go and click on this thing that looks like a spanner and a screwdriver. And here are all of the menu settings. So very quickly, the reverse menu allows you to reverse the channel. So you see the, those bars moving in correlation with the stick movements. If they are moving the wrong way, then you can reverse them in here. Some flight controllers are very clever and they'll learn which way is which. Uh, we're going to uh, check that they're all moving the right way. So we'll come back to that. End point. So this again is how far each of the sticks move. So again, we talked about it should be a thousand at one side and red as 2000 at the other. This is to make sure that you get as close to those values as you can without going over them. And this is how you can change those. Then we've got the auxiliary channels. Let me show you what I've done in here. So I've set up channel five. So I, you can just click on the individual channel and pick the one you want. And then if you click on this button here, it asks you which switch you want to use. And the switches actually kind of have written by the side them the names. It's switch B that I'm after. So switch B is now channel five. That's the one we're going to use for the modes. Then we have sub trim. Now sub trim, again, you, if you remember the middle position is supposed to be 1500. If we connect it up to the flight controller and find it isn't reading exactly 1500 for the middle position of the elevator, aileron and rudder, we can come into this menu, just change it a little bit until the value reads exactly 1500. If it doesn't, then the model will drift. Then we have things like the mixes, we have fail safe. Now fail safe is really important and something you should also set up. Now in each of these, you can click on the channel. Now this is channel one, which I think was um, aileron, there it is. So we can see aileron is gonna move and we need to be able to set what's gonna happen if the radio loses control with the radio receiver. Because in theory, what we want is for the craft to just drop out of the sky if we have a problem and not fly off and never be seen again. So what we've done here is for channel one, we've set it up in that position as basically in the middle, which is where it is, it's kind of hiding behind that middle spot, okay? And um, what you do is once the switch is in the right position, you just press set up and you go back. And every single one of my channels is zero apart from channel three, which is my throttle. I want the throttle to be at minus 100%, so if the radio has a problem, the throttle turns off, and that's what the uh, flight controller is told to do. And the other thing I've done as well is I've also changed it so that the flight control switch, which is that switch at the top that we set up, is going to be minus 100 as well. So in the event of a problem, what the radio is going to say to my model is I want you to be completely level, stop turning around, but turn your motors off and fall to the ground. And that's the failsafe. Not having failsafe on will cause you a ton of problems. Okay, so 
that is pretty standard stuff. We have a rough idea how everything's going to be set up. The only other thing I have done in here is changed the output mode. I've changed it to PPM. Now, I don't know if that's going to make any difference, but on this radio receiver that we have here, this FSI6B, then we have the bind plug and the battery voltage is this very um, top set of pins. And down here, hopefully you'll be able to read that, it says PPM channel 1. Now, PPM is how we're going to connect it to the model, so that is how I want the output. So I'm just putting it into PPM mode. Not sure if I have to do that to get it to work, um, but in the testing I've done, that seems to be fine. So we'll go back. There we go. Now, the only other thing I've done on here is I have set up the fly modes. Um, if I show you what those are like. So on this radio, you appear to be able to set different modes. So I've set it up as channel 6, um, but I've set the switch to be the same as the mode switch that we're normally using. So as, And then you can change the name of each of the switch positions so it appears on the screen. This isn't something that you necessarily need to do. You could skip this bit altogether, but it now needs for me. I'll know that position 1, I want it to set as angle mode, and that's how it's going to be set in clean flight. Position 2 is set to Horizon, Position 3 is set to Rate Mode. If you go back to the screen, it just means here you can see that for Fly Mode, as I move my switch for uh, Channel 5, it just appears on the front so I can remember how I'm flying. Okay, next thing we need to do is then we need to bind the radio. Now we've got the failsafe set up, now we've told it that we want to use PPM, and most of the other radios that I've ever used, you don't have to set the output mode. But what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to actually bind the receiver to the radio. Now, we do need to provide and power up the receiver with a 5 volt supply while the bind plug is installed. Now, the bind plug comes as part of the kit. And it's this special weird plug here that looks like this. And all this does is connect the ground wire to the signal wire. Now, on most flight controllers, you'll have something called bind. It's called BVCC. We just plug that into that connector there, and then what we have is, uh, when it turns on, we'll have a flashing light that means it's ready for bind mode. Now, we need to power it from 5 volts. Now, if you remember, when we actually put the craft together, we did wire in a separate 5 volt supply. So you could pop your battery into the power distribution board and just plug that 5 volts into any one of the other connectors. However, I, because I do this an awful lot, have a, a separate little battery illuminator circuit that I use all the time. It's a little 3 amp UBEC, um, and what it's got on one end is the connector that we're going to plug into stuff, and the other end is a battery connector. If you're going to be getting into the hobby, having something like this is fantastic. It means that you don't have to mess about powering everything up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug this into the radio. Now normally on the side of a radio it tells you which is the signal pin out of these three and which is the negative pin. Uh, it hasn't on this which isn't fantastically helpful but this bottom row here is negative so on this connector just like the 5 volt connector that we installed onto the power distribution board I'm just going to plug that in so that the black wire is at the bottom the red wire is in the middle. Now if I power the receiver up so if I just plug that in You'll see now that the red light is flashing. That is now in bind mode. Great stuff. So we're just going to leave that there. And what we'll do then is we'll go into the menus in here. We'll go down to bind. Receiver bind. Click on that. It was that fast. There we go. And if we go back into the main menu, we can now see we can see the receiver voltage. So we are bound. That looks really promising. So now the radio and the receiver is all set, we can plug it into the model itself. Now what we need to do here is unplug the power from the receiver. And that's very promising because now the radio uh, alarmed then to let us know there was a problem. Let's turn this off for now, just press and hold these two buttons. Very musical. And we also then need to pull the bind plug because now we're bound not only should it do things like remember all the failsafe positions and how it's configured, uh, but next time we plug it in, we want it to work as a radio receiver, not be waiting to hear from the radio itself. So we need to plug this into the 
model that we've already got. So let me bring that model back in. So on here, uh, there are a number of different ways that we can connect this board to a receiver. And I'm not going to go in huge detail here into each of them, but I'll cover them very simply. If you want to know more about PPM, SBUS, PWM, then you can go and watch this video here and it will go through it in laborious detail. But the way this works here, you'll probably notice that the connector that comes out of this side and there are loads of wires that you get with this flight controller. Well, this, this just happens to be where you plug it in in the Seriously Pro SP3. The first wire, there we go, um, looks like a proper servo wire. It has all three of the connectors in. Then all of the other wires just have a single connector. Now the reason for that is that this wire is either channel 1 or you can use it for PPM connections. Now PPM for us is exactly what we're after because PPM is a single wire connection. So let's just talk about those three connections very briefly. Again, if you want to know more, you can go and watch that other video. So PPM allows you to connect using one single wire. So that's what we're going to do. We have a PPM output here on our receiver, which is this one at the bottom. It says PPM. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plug that one wire into the output, again, putting the black cable at the bottom. Most receivers will show you which is signal and which is ground, and that should be all the connections made. There is also another version of the single wire connection that's very commonly used, and that's called SBUS. Now the challenge with SBUS, it's a digital signal, and it also is inverted. So unless your flight controller can handle that, then you're gonna have a problem. Now the flight controller that we're using here, the Seriously Pro SP3, clone actually will support SBUS natively, but things like NASI 32s um, normally won't, so you'll need an external inverter, which is why we're using PPM, because we just avoid all of that messing about. Now the other option here of course is that this thing has channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 written on it. So if we were going to use PWM, what we do is we look at the manual and we then figure out which is each individual channel output, so which is aileron, which is elevator on both the receiver and the inputs for the flight controller and then we plug them in. Getting them the wrong way around is a disaster, we can fix that later on but now hopefully you can see why we've gone for PPM because it just is easy. With that one cable we're ready to rock and roll. So now we're there, let's plug it into clean flight, make sure it works. I'm going to power this using the same battery illuminator circuit that we had before. Now we could actually plug in the main power supply from the battery and have that all working, but we're not going to do that. I don't like doing that, that until um, I'm absolutely ready for that step. So to power the receiver, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the power into any of the spare connectors that we have on here. Again, observing the same polarity. That will power the receiver, but also send the five volts and ground up through this single cable into our flight controller and power that too. So let's just do that now. I'll show you how that works. So I'm just gonna plug it in. So there we have the flashing light on the receiver is telling us that it isn't connected to the radio. The radio is not on, but you can see that everything is powered up. We have lights and things flashing there. So now what I'm going to do is plug this back into clean flight. We'll power up the radio. And again, we have no props on here. The props can't run because there's no main battery power. But I would always recommend whenever you're doing this on a bench, make sure the props aren't off. Let's jump into clean flight and do the configuration to make sure that this receiver is all working and then we're ready for the next video where we'll do final configuration. So let's go to the laptop. So back on the computer we've restarted clean flight, we've plugged it in via the USB cable and we have our little radio connected here with uh, everything all set. So the little red light is solid on the receiver, so that looks promising. We can see the receiver voltage and uh, everything's flashing and looking happy on the flight controller too. So we're going to click on connect on the computer first of all and there is our model. So if we move the model we can see everything moving. Fantastic. And what we're going to do is check whether or not all the radio things work. Now it can be a little bit worrying because what you tend to do, if you go into receiver, here's all the channels. If I now move the controls 
nothing's moving in the channels at all. And that's because you have to tell CleanFlight what mode you're connecting to. So SBUS, PWM, PPM or whatever. So we need to go into configuration first of all. We need to go down here into receiver mode. And here you can see by default it's set for parallel PWM. That's not the one we're using. We're using PPM. So we need to click that, click on save and reboot. The board will reboot and come back up. Now, if we go into receiver, as we move the sticks, so there's the throttle moving up, so it goes to 2007 and down to 1003, and you can see that the aileron, which is roll, is working great. It's going up to 2007 and down to just over 1000. Elevator is pitch, that's great. So that is all good. Rudder, oh, look at that, fantastic. And also my mode switch which is that channel 5 is working too. That looks fabulous. So there are a couple of things here that I probably want to fix though. I need to go into the menus here to set the middle positions because if we can see roll pitch and yaw are set to 1505. We need those at uh, exactly 1500 or as close as we can. If you're doing it with a different radio and you come in here and the controls don't match so that the controls aren't moving the right ones then it's probably the channel map that's wrong so you can change it in here um, to be the different order but on our radio because aileron's channel 1, elevator's channel 2, throttle's channel 3 and rudder uh, is channel 4 and then we've got auxiliaries 1, 2, 3, 4 it matches perfectly so if it doesn't work do that. So on the radio I'm going to go into the subtrain menu now Spend a bit of time getting these as close to 1500, and then I'm also going to change the maximum throws because at the moment going over 2000 or 2007 is a little bit much. So, for the high end, I'm going to drop that 100% that we were looking at before for that travel menu down to probably about 98%, something like that, just to make sure that all of the channels don't go below 1000 or above 2000, and in the middle positions, they're all going to read 1500. So we're ready for the next video in the series. So join me in the next one where we're going to come back and do the final setup and testing, the final clean flight configuration, setting up the mode so they match what we've got set here on the radio, and then it'll be time for our first test hover. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.